it's Dave. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for watching as always and special thanks to the channel members for bearing with me as I went through a bit of a dry spell on the channel dealing with the move and some personal stuff. This by the way, the first video from my new house. So I basically have no time today and won't be able to do much editing. Probably won't end up making a thumbnail for this video and we'll just kind of put it out there. But I really did want to talk about a few pieces of news that have come out lately and I think aren't really getting enough discussion. They're kind of flying under the radar because they're not really coming from the mainstream sources but are very important to Rocket Lab and do think it bears discussion. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, so first of all, we're going to take a look at Rocket Lab's backlog to kind of put this in perspective. And while the growth has been quite impressive overall, you can see that it's really just been one major step change, right? We were hovering around $500 million for quite a while since 2022. We got one big contract really that pushed us up to the billion dollar mark. And that was 18 satellites for the Space Development Agency's tranche two of their new uh, missile tracking constellation worth about $500 million. Very important contract for Rocket Lab and their debut as a space prime. Uh, I have been getting a little bit uneasy about the backlog staying flat now for basically over a year at this point. We're talking five quarters and I'm kind of getting antsy to see it go up. And what I thought was going to deliver the next big step up in backlog, which is obviously a great indicator for their future business, is the next tranche of the SDA's defense constellation. The SDA already set out uh, industry solic solicitations and we were expecting that it would close later this year. Yeah, draft solicitation expected early in second quarter of fiscal 25, that already did happen. And then final in third quarter and uh, eventually the SDA would make their decision on the next batch of satellites, which is gonna be quite hefty. And I was hoping Rocket Lab could land, say another $500 million contract, which would be a, a very big thing for the company and their back. Backlog. However, we did just get news this past week from the SDA saying that if we look at the highlighted section here, they are delaying the solicitation until the SDA receives further budgetary guidance. The solicitations of Cigna and Lambda, as well as this Upsilon. So it's kind of divided into three separate batches of satellites. This is the transport layer. Uh, will also not proceed until further budgetary guidance has been received. So uh, that's pretty uh, upsetting to me as a Rocket Lab shareholder. I was really looking forward to this going through and I thought Rocket Lab was extremely well placed to land another big contract from the SDA. So very bad news, uh, no questions about that. Why wasn't the stock hit more in terms of the markets? I think it's because this kind of thing we see direct from the SDA hasn't really gotten picked up a ton. And you know, it's not a splashy headline with Rocket Lab's company name in it or anything like that. But make no mistake, this is very big for the company. Only delayed, not canceled yet, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Next up, uh, the Golden Dome. There's been a lot of talk of this from the new Trump administration in the White House, building a Golden Dome of space satellites for defensive purposes. They would track you know missiles coming from adversaries around the globe which is actually pretty much the same thing the sda constellation is already going to do so a ton of confusion going on uh, is this golden dome incorporating the sda constellation are they two separate constellations doing the same thing what's going on there i don't know uh, maybe you can tell me more down below but anyway spacex is submitting a bid to build a bunch of these Golden Dome satellites, something like 400 to 1,000 missile defense satellites working with Andurial and uh, Palantir, which, you know, great companies. And I, I do have to give SpaceX their due because they have been a great company and delivered for the government time and time again. Uh, but yeah, so if this were to come to pass, per perhaps that could result in, you know, the SDA kind of 
shifting into this direction with these SpaceX-based satellites. How does that all fit together? Does this have anything to do with the pause in the SCA constellation? Is Elon Musk's uh, relationship with Donald Trump have anything to do with it? And uh, should that be scrutinized further? That's kind of the worries we're seeing a ton of online right now. And interestingly, with this SDA constellation goes even further, or sorry, the Golden Dome constellation goes even further than the SDA, not just to track these missiles and shoot them down from ground-based, you know, anti-missile defenses, but actually put missiles in space and try to shoot down enemy missiles from orbiting satellites, which would be, you know, a, a massive investment. And I, I don't know how I feel about putting weapons in space, but that's not really the purpose of today's video. So again, this is a little bit of a risk as far as I'm concerned when it comes to the future of that SDA constellation, whether it gets canceled or it's just a minor delay, because uh, I was really, as I said, counting on it for the next leg up in Rocket Lab Space Systems revenue. Um, Another thing that what another thing that's a bit of an issue, of course, Mars Sample Return, another project that Rocket Lab is trying to get under their belt, trying to bid on. There's these samples sitting on the surface of Mars, dug up by the Curiosity rover. Currently, there's no way to get them back. Rocket Lab submitted a proposal that they think is a great way to get these samples back, many billion dollars cheaper than uh, what was previously envisioned. And um, this was another you know, thing that Rocket Lab was really vying for and advocating for themselves for their strategy and would be you know, huge for the company, not only from the revenue that would come to Rocket Lab, but also the prestige and what they would learn. I mean, landing on Mars, being the first company to return samples from the surface of Mars, potentially these samples having signs or proof of ancient life on Mars, I think that would really put Rocket Lab on the, on the map like nothing else, but anyway, um, what we're seeing now in Trump's skinny budget for NASA, which is basically their planned budget that they sent the, the basic details of to Congress without all the minutia, we do have Mars sample return getting cut completely, which would be, you know, obviously very disappointing for Rocket Lab as well. And in addition to that, SLS being cut, uh, the Lunar Gateway Space Station being cut, and the Orion capsule being cut. Now, personally, I have no problem with those other three platforms getting cut because they have been way over budget and taking way longer than they should, costing the taxpayers way too much money, and I think they're just being inefficient. Uh, Mars sample return, you know, I, I'm sad to see it go if it does indeed go. Obviously, this is kind of a proposal that has to go through Congress and they will have their say too, so we'll see. But between these two massive programs, one getting officially delayed, the other one potentially getting canceled. And by the way, the skinny budget says that these samples will be returned by astronauts going to Mars, which is another, you know, plan that Elon Musk has wanted to send astronauts to Mars for ages. So yeah, another way I guess Elon could be getting his way. Um, it, it is a cause for concern, I think, for Rocket Lab investors, uh, justifiably so. Um, obviously, this budget for NASA was upsetting for a lot of other reasons, a ton of other stuff getting defunded for science, planetary research, you know, climate change research, uh, t massive telescopes getting defunded and a lot of sad stuff like that. But for Rocket Lab, the big thing is the Mars sample return cut, obviously. Um, so yeah, a couple pieces of bad news, but not everything is doom and gloom, right? So when we talk about what this new administration is thinking about putting in place with this Golden Dome, $25 billion marked for it, including $15 billion for satellite sensors, launch infrastructure, and, infra and uh, interceptors. You know, that could be a lot of new potential contracts Rocket Lab could bid on. We're talking $2 billion for military satellites, 
5.6 billion space based and boost phase missile interceptors, uh, 2.4 billion military non kinetic missile defense, uh, and then the big 7.2 billion for space based sensors. So there's a lot of stuff in here, potentially new stuff Rocket Lab could bid for as well. So where does this all leave us? Is it time for panic? Are we officially, you know, losing billions of dollars worth of business for Rocket Lab and the space system side? Well, not for sure. SDA, you know, they're, I guess they're going to review things with the budget. Maybe they will reinstate it in the coming weeks. We don't know for sure. This could end up being nothing but a speed bump and Rocket Lab does get their next leg of SDA satellite contracts. That would be very exciting. Mars sample return, uh, not officially dead as these things do have to go through Congress, but I'm not too optimistic about that one anymore. Uh, ultimately though, Rocket Lab is, you know, best in class and they accomplish whatever they set out to accomplish. They've really proven their expertise with building out, say, the Escobate satellites going to Mars, the capstone mission going to the moon, and whatever is out there, I just am confident that they can and will execute on. So whether there's some turbulence from this incoming administration changing things up and what the plans were for the government, once things become clear about what the new strategy is, I don't doubt that Rocket Lab can compete successfully and execute on those things. Another bright spot is massive investment in haste, uh, hypersonic you know, missile defenses, and Rocket Lab will only benefit from that with Electron. So it's not all just negatives. There are some positives here, but... Overall, it is, I think, on the negative side. Uh, will Elon Musk have an unfair advantage from all of this? It's really hard to say. And one thing to keep in mind, as I said, is that SpaceX has just executed so well for so long. Without them, we wouldn't have astronauts being able to go back and forth to the ISS, except for the Russians. And, uh, you know, they've been a reliable and cheap uh, partner for NASA. So I can't just say everything SpaceX gets is because Elon is close with Trump. They have earned a lot of business and a lot of credit, and I always want to give it to them. But I do think there needs to be competition. There needs to be uh, opportunities for multiple companies to work in these spaces so that there is a vibrant marketplace with companies pushing each other to improve. Nobody wants a you know, single company getting everything in the space industry, having a monopoly, and then that just really stifles innovation and causes prices to rise because no one is pushing those costs lower and competing with them. And the government, at least many layers of the government, is well aware of that, and they've stated their desire is to foster a diverse ecosystem of contractors and suppliers that can work with them as well as commercial companies. So yeah, a lot of moving pieces right now, some very big contracts in question or being canceled. Uh, Rocket Lab, I am confident, will be able to roll with the punches, but could be some delays in seeing the backlog rise. The other thing to think about is they are really working hard on their own satellite platform, which is the Flatolite, and they will be, you know, probably making partnerships and offering services, owning their own satellites in orbit. So that isn't in the backlog, right? Because when you're building your own satellites and planning to launch them yourself, there's no contracts there for you. In backlog but suddenly you've got satellites in orbit that will deliver to you recurring revenue month after month after month that could be you know not in the backlog so it could be surprised to the positive side in a year two year and then you know maybe the just accelerate their own constellation. And I really think, especially in times of this much uncertainty, uh, being in control of your own destiny and just having your own product that you can take to market, sell directly to other countries, other companies is, you know, a very powerful thing for Rocket Lab as well. And another point is in terms of other countries that a lot of them are starting to really want to get their own constellations going and be less reliant on the United States. So we've heard stories from the United Kingdom, from Germany, from all sorts of countries wanting their own constellations and the work in space is definitely not going away. It's only expanding. A report just came out, I 
think this week that the space industry is expected to grow by 1.5 times in the coming years, something like 2029 or something like that, some experience some massive growth. So that is still going to be underway. And we still have all sorts of companies like Amazon, Apple entering the game who need satellites or at least components and launch and all the rest and with Neutron coming online as well. So um, definitely not what I wanted to see from the SDA. I was very much hoping in the coming months Rocket Lab would land $500 million plus contract with them. Let me know down below. Do you think this is going to be completely canceled? Is this just some delay while they get their funding in order and then it will be resumed? How does this Golden Dome and potential uh, you know, Elon Musk and Anduriel constellation fit in with the SDA and what does the future hold for Rocket Lab? We should learn quite a lot in the earnings call coming up in just a couple days. So really excited for that. And I will, of course, live stream that one with you guys. So I do encourage you to join me on the 8th around 5 p.m. Eastern time. And we're all here about the latest updates Rocket Lab has for us and their latest progress over the past quarter. Thank you guys so much for watching. As I said, a very quick one and I didn't have any time for editing. So hopefully I didn't do too bad and stutter too much or anything like that. I hope you guys have a great day and a great rest of the week. I will see you soon for the next video. Oh, and please do remember to subscribe if you haven't already. It's so important for the channel. Uh, see you soon. Bye for now.